Alrighty, welcome back everyone, it's Garland here bringing you another Neverwinter video. Uh, and today we are finally releasing the mod 11.5 Warlock build and guide. Uh, now full disclaimer, this guide isn't going to be for everyone. Uh, this is going to be a top end, top tier uh, guide and loadout. Now that we officially have loadouts in the game, uh, we are going to utilize multiple loadouts. Uh, most people are unfortunately not going to be able to afford to gear up enchantment wise and everything else as far as two loadouts go. Uh, if you're not able to do that right now, uh, you can go back and look at some of the previous uh, mod guides and follow those. Uh, however, this is very niche related. Um, utilizing the loadout system, we are going to be making some significant changes between loadouts. Uh, so you can follow this guide and use it to your guide point to work up into this point. Uh, so without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into this. Uh, starting right off the bat, uh, it was recently discovered that human is going to be best in slot for the warlock as far as your race goes. Uh, it actually outperforms uh, Dragonborn uh, and Tefling. Um, with about a 2.3% overall DPS increase based off your constitution rolls. Uh, I will provide a link uh, in the description of this video, uh, courtesy of Viral, uh, for doing all the math to prove this. Uh, but yes, it has been proven that human for the Warlock right now is going to be best in slot. Uh, it, it is going to be 2.3% overall DPS increase. Uh, now, however, this is going to be situational as well. Um, if you're still not melting bosses at endgame content, uh, the racial bonus from Tefling is still a good option to have. Uh, however, if you are melting bosses and everything, you might as well just roll human and gain that extra 2.3%. Uh, uh, so we're going to go with the human. Uh, we are going to jump right into the gear. Uh, as far as this is going to be your um, Hellbringer AoE loadout. So we are using Hellbringer. Uh, we're going to use the four-piece Vivified Relic Armor which is going to be your helmet, uh, your armor, your arms, and your feet, all vivified relic armor. Uh, and then you can use armor reinforcements uh, to make up whatever statistics you need. I choose uh, power uh, as far as reinforcements go. However, you can go with crit if you still need crit. Jumping right into our weapon set, we are going with the River District. Ascendant weapon set. Uh, I went with the Abilith. Uh, now you can go with the Fae if you want uh, that little more AP regeneration. You can go with the Fae. However, I did go with the Abilith. Now if we look at the weapon, as far as artifact powers go, we have Hellish Rebuke to increase by 12%. On our offhand, we have All-Consuming Curse to give us that 5% crit severity. Uh, and as well as I went with Combat Advantage. However, you can uh, replace this with AP uh, if you still need the action point uh, gain. Uh, the shirt and pants have still not changed. We've been rocking these shirt and pants for a very long time. It's just the gem uh, elemental shirt and pants set. Our three-piece... Um, our three-piece set, we are still going with the Orcus set, so you're going to be rocking the necklace, the waist, as well as the Orcus artifact. As far as your reinforcements go on your necklace and your rings and your belt, uh, we always go with action point gain. So that's four-piece action point gain here. The rings, we're going with the rising power and the rising precision. Uh, you can use Storm King Thunder Rings. That is completely up to you. However, I still prefer the Underdark Rings. Um, so we're going with the Rising Precision plus 5 and the Rising Power plus 5. Uh, you'll notice that my enchantments and my rings are all Azores for my crit because I need to make up the crit strike from this location here. Uh, as far as enchantments go overall, you still should be putting Darks uh, in your defensive slots. 
uh, and then Radiance in your offensive slots. Now, if you do prefer to use Brutals, uh, that is completely up to you if you want to make your critical uh, with your Brutals. Uh, it's going to cut down on your overall power, however. Now, as far as your armor uh, enchantment, I am still going with the negation, guys. Uh, you can't beat the negation. Uh, in an AoE situation, you are going to get hit. So I just prefer the negation. Uh, especially on Hellbringer when you're popping your pillar of power in the middle of a bunch of trash mobs. Uh, it's just the way to go. You're going to get hit. The negation will stack up some damage resistance for you as well as some other little bonuses uh, such as incoming healing uh, as well as recovery. Now this is a major... Um, Part of this build in particular is going to be your weapon enchantment, uh, and we are using the lightning enchantment for AoE situations. Uh, it works out extremely well uh, on the Warlock. As far as your other artifacts go, uh, I'm currently going with the Sigil of the Hunter, which is going to be power recovery. I'm using the Sigil of the Controller, which is going to be power crit. Uh, and as my active, we are still using the Sigil of the Devoted. That's going to be wrapping up the gear and enchantments. We're going to move in right into the build. We're going to right off the bat be taking weapon mastery 3 out of 3 for the crit chance. We're going to be taking 4 out of 5 in energizing curse. We're going to take 3 out of 3 for empowered rituals. We're going to take 5 out of 5 for determined casting. We're going to put two points into Blood Pack, three points into Devastating Critical, and then also three points into Scorn for Curse. Remember guys, this is a strictly AoE loadout build. Lesser Curse does a lot of damage. Now we do have the three extra feet points. Remember, you're a human, you will get three extra feet points. Let's jump right into the build. We're strictly going 90% uh, uh, furry. Furry, oh my gosh. Uh, fury. <laughs> uh, we're going to take 5 out of 5 for Daughter's Promise. Uh, 5 out of 5 for Offering to the Prisoner. 5 out of 5 for Gatekeepers. 5 out of 5 for Hell Touched. 5 out of 5 for Infernal Wrath. 5 out of 5 for Executioner's Gift, 5 out of 5 for Brutal Curse, and then finally Creeping Death. And then we will have uh, 5 extra points that I recommend you do put into Relentless Curse. Uh, so when your Warlock, Warlock's Curse is removed from a target, that target has a 100% chance to get a Lesser Curse already on it, uh, which kicks in your Scornful Curse. Uh, this entire build is built on AoE situations. All of these are going to be AoE uh, feats that you're going to want to take. Moving right along into the boons, uh, if you are in a guild, you're going to take the power boon, the life steal boon. Uh, Sharndar, take the whole bottom. Uh, Dark Fey Hunter, uh, Fey Precision, Elven Haste, Elven Ferocity, and Elvish um, Fury. Dreadring, uh, we're going to take Conjurer's Gambit, Evoker's Thirst, Forbidden Piercing, Shadow Touch, and then of course Rampaging Madness. Icewind Dell, the whole bottom row again. Tactics, uh, Refreshing Chill, Sleet Skills, Cool Resolve, and Winter's Bounty. Underdark, we're going to be taking Might, Focus, Tactics, Stamina, and then the Strikes. Uh, Tyranny, we're going with uh, Dragon's Claws, Dragon's Gaze, Draconic Armor Breaker, Dragon's Greed, and then of course 3 out of 3 for Dragon's uh, Fury, 8% uh, uh, Crit Severity, basically. Maze Engine, Siphoning, Influence, Swiftness, and Baphomet's Might. Elemental Evil, 
uh, Wave of Force, Heart of Stone, Searing Aggression, and then Gell of Retribution. Storm King's Thunder, Cold Hearted, Hardy Constitution, Icy Wrath, Glacial Strength, and then three out of three for Chill of Winter. Uh, then for the Cloak Descendancy, uh, Aura of Hope, uh, Frenzy, and then Soothing, and then for your final boon, uh, Aberrant Power. Now all of these boons are going to be the same for your single target loadout as well. Moving right along to Companions. Uh, we are still staying with Belil uh, for the 10% crit severity. Uh, the Air Archon for the 5% damage increase. The Siege Master for the 4% damage increase. 100% uh, necessary. You have to have an Owlbear Cub if you're running Hellbringer. And then finally, as our summoned active companion, we are still using the Con Artist. However, you still, you know, you can substitute the Con Artist uh, for the Cell Sword or the Rebel Mercenary uh, if you have the gear uh, to equip either of those. So, of course, we have our rank 12 bonding rune stones. Uh, and then the con artist does have three ring slots. And I'm right now using two fierce uh, and one heroic. Uh, and then I have six black ice in my AoE loadout build that has not changed. Uh, that's going to be power, crit, and recovery. Uh, moving on to your mounts. Uh, if you're lucky enough to have uh, one or two legendary bonuses... Uh, for the AoE loadout, I choose the Rapid Recovery for the 4,000 Recovery, uh, and then Tenzer's Transformation. For your mount bonuses, we're going to be using Protector's Camaraderie, Calvary's Warning, Magistrate's Patience, Artificer's Persuasion, and Assassin's Covenant. All with Epic Insignias, with either Armor Pen, Power... Uh, or crit where you so need it. Your initial stat rolls are you're going for your uh, uh, attributes. Uh, you want to roll the highest amount of constitution you can. That's uh, how human is going to interact and do more damage. Uh, so you're going to strictly go constitution and charisma. Uh, your initial attribute roll should be high constitution. Now this is going to wrap it up for the. Uh, Hellbringer AoE loadout. Uh, I'm currently gear score 16,620. Uh, we are going to be moving on to the Soulbinder single target build uh, coming up. Alrighty, now we're going to be talking about the Soulbinder single target build. Uh, we have just finished talking about the Hellbringer AoE loadout. Uh, let's jump right into the single target build. Uh, there are some changes with the gear as well. Uh, starting off with the helmet, we are going to be going with the guise of the Wolf Clan. Uh, this helmet has the highest amount of power on a helmet right now. Uh, you gain 2,000 power when in a party, uh, and it also has 516 power. Uh, now, when you're doing Fangbreaker or MSVA, you still should be switching to your Harl's Gaze. Uh, but when you're doing Spell Plague uh, or future content, uh, the guise of the Wolf Clan is going to be um, the go-to for right now. Uh, as far as your armor goes, we have the Executioner's Black Attire. Uh, strictly for the fact that the equip bonus is you will do 5% more damage to enemies that are not facing you. So when you're in a boss encounter, just make sure you are standing uh, behind the boss or in your combat advantage range. Uh, the arms, we're going with the survivor wraps because again, uh, the there's no other arms in the game right now that have... Uh, higher power than the survivors wraps with almost 3,000 power on them uh, Your boots you're still going to be using the same you're going to be using your vivified uh, relic boots uh, Your weapons you're going to be using the relic weapons if you don't have your relic weapons You can still substitute the ascendant set either the abilith or the fey uh, however, if you do have your 
Uh, relic set, I prefer to run them on the single target loadout. That way I can control my Shadow Slep verse uh, using encounter power so I can manage uh, the set bonus on it. Uh, the rings are going to stay the same. Your three-piece set is going to stay the same. If we look at the powers, uh, our Essence Defowler is going to be boosted by 8%. And then we're going to be using Dust to Dust, uh, which is going to be 5% um, more damage uh, as you accumulate Soul Sparks. And we also have Combat Advantage on this as well. Your Artifacts, we are switching around a little bit. Uh, we swapped the Eye of the Giant in uh, for the Power Crit Armor Pen Defense. As far as your armor enchantment goes, uh, I have changed from the negation on the AoE uh, to the Bark Shield. The Bark Shield works out very well in a single target encounter. If they have some sort of uh, area effect, uh, your Bark Shield's going to eat it up. Uh, so you might not get one shot, basically. Uh, now a major part of this loadout and build uh, is going to be the weapon enchantment. Um, just like the lightning for the AoE, uh, we're going to be using the Fey Touched for the single target. Um, now as far as single target goes and AoE goes, uh, if you can't uh, have access to the lightning for AoE, you can substitute the Vorpal. Uh, the same thing for the single target on the Soul Binder. If you can't uh, get a Fey Touched, you can use a Dread. Uh, however, for this specific guide and build, uh, the Fey Touch is, I don't want to say 100% necessary, uh, but it will generate you a lot of Soul Sparks. So let's move in to the build itself. We're going to be taking 3 out of 3 for Weapon Mastery, uh, 4 out of 5 for Energizing Curse, 3 out of 3 for Empowered Rituals, 5 out of 5 for Determined Casting, 5 out of 5 for Blood Pack, so we get that 5% Constitution bonus, 3 out of 3 for Devastating Critical. Now moving into the build, we're going to be taking 5 out of 5 for Critical Promise, 5 out of 5 for Burning Soul, 5 out of 5 for Infernal Wrath, 5 out of 5 for Executioners, 5 out of 5 for Murderous, 5 out of 5 for Brutal, and then Creeping Death. Now we're also going to drop down into uh, Relentless Curse, 5 out of 5, as well as Spark Binder, as you will be spamming your Immolation Spirits uh, pretty often. Uh, all, the po all the boons, as I stated, will remain the same. Uh, the Companions, there are going to be some differences. Uh, you're still going to be using either your Con Artist, your Cell Sword, or your Rebel Mercenary. However, I now take out uh, the six Black Ice and put in Pure Radiance for power. Uh, you're going to be taking off your Owlbear Cub because you don't need it for Soul Binder. Uh, and I choose to replace it with the Earth Archon um, for you know more overall damage. Uh, moving back into the mounts, the only major difference is, is that we're going to take the 4K recovery off and now we're going to go with the 4K power uh, yet again, increasing our overall power. Uh, you want to do as much single target damage as you possibly can. So I believe we have now gone through everything. Uh, we have now gone over through the Hellbringer uh, AoE loadout as well as the Soul Binder single target loadout. Uh, if you guys do have any questions, be sure to leave me a comment below. Uh, there will be a second video as always going over uh, the powers for both loadouts, uh, as well as when to use them and your spell rotations. So I hope you guys did enjoy uh, the latest uh, Warlock build and guide. Uh, if I did miss anything, uh, just like I said, leave me a comment below if you have a question. Uh, be sure to ask it. Uh, like I said, this is a very high-end uh, build-in guide. Not a lot of people are going to be able to gear out two separate loadouts with, you know, all rank 12s and the specific gear. Um, 
So if you do have any questions, be sure to, you know, leave me a comment below. I will be sure to answer it, as always. Um, hopefully you enjoyed this 11.5 uh, Warlock guide and build. Uh, there will be links in the description to all pertinent information. Uh, we'll see you guys in the next video.